Talk to Shannon Sharp from CBS, also a Hall of Famer, tight end. Curious what he thinks about Heinz Ward's numbers. I said Hall of Very Good. And I feel bad saying that because you look at the numbers and a couple of Super Bowls and... Was he MVP of one Super Bowl? Does that sound right, McLovin? Heinz Ward? I believe so. Double uh, check. Me. Okay. But 1,000 catches? No. Oh. I guess I don't look at 1,000 catches the way I once did. Wes Welker, a Hall of Famer, if he gets 1,000 catches? I don't know. Let's bring in Shannon Sharp. Join us. Let me start there. Uh, Heinz Ward, Hall of Famer? <laughs> Why do you guys ask me these tough questions? I, I, you know, I don't really know what the criteria is. It's not like baseball. You know, see, baseball used to be if you had 500 homers as a, uh, as a position player, you had 300 wins as a pitcher, that was automatic Hall of Fame. Then they brought the PEDs in, and then we don't really know what Hall of Fame. There are no magic numbers. You know, if, if I told you 552, you don't know that that's the, probably the number of touchdowns that Brett Barr threw, or 70,000 is the number of total yards he has, or, or 18,165 is what Emmett rushed for. The numbers don't mean the same in football as they do in baseball. So I really don't know. I hear some people say, well, when we go into the room for the Hall of Fame, we want to look at the guys and see did they define the position, did they change the position, um, you know, was was Hines ever the one of one of the two or three best receivers in the game when he played? Probably not. So I I, I really don't know what they're looking. Yeah, for. but you know what it comes so, down to, Shannon, is if I say his name, and and if it you comes down to do like the forty four guys, men and women that's in that room, how well do they like you? Yeah, but that's okay, okay, but that factors in, and and it's not supposed to, and it shouldn't factor in what you do off the field. It's supposed to be what you do on the field. But if I say mm-hmm. Heinz Ward, you should have an immediate reaction. Hall of Famer or not? <laughs> I don't. I don't get the vote, Dad. So that I, sounds I, I, like does, you don't think he's a Hall of Famer. It does. It doesn't matter what I think. Yes, it I does. Like You're a Hall of Famer. But but we don't get to vote. The Hall of Fame members don't get you to vote. You can vote on my show if you're if, if you're in the room right now and we're sitting well, around. Well, well, there, there there are guys that are in the Hall of Fame at that position with less numbers than what Heinz Ward had, and with less. Super Bowls, and without a Super Bowl MVP. So if you factor all those things in, I think he's very deserving. I think he will have a long, heated discussion in that room. Will he get in on the first ballot? Probably not. But I think eventually Heinz Ward will be in the Hall of Fame. All right, there you go. That wasn't that tough. (laughs) It's tough because you really don't know what they look. I mean, if I tell you T.O., you yeah. know, is T.O. a Hall of Famer? Yep. Is Randy Moss a Hall of Famer? Yep. But I think those guys are going to struggle because of the perception that the that the men and women for voting have of these guys. So it's going to be tough for them to get in on the first the first ballot. You know, Randy Moss. I think it should be slammed up. No, Randy Moss. There shouldn't be any argument. I know that there are times he took plays off. I thought he was you know sort of a bandwagon guy with Oakland when they were playing well. He was great. When they weren't, then he wasn't. But what he did in Minnesota, even in New England. Uh, we've never seen a receiver that big do what he did, and uh, I have I have no problem with him as a Hall of Famer. To To will fight it because he wasn't a winner. Although you can look at what he did when he came back from the broken leg to play in the Super Bowl, which was unbelievable. Not a good teammate. Had a lot of things to say about his quarterbacks. It was a me first attitude, and I know most receivers are like that, uh, Shannon. No, but no, 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 no. Take that back, Dan. Most NFL players are like that. See the receivers get a bad rap. But see, why is it no one? Why is it no one talking about a uh, Drew Brees because they franchise him? But when receivers or running backs or corners get franchised, and they say, "Well, that's a lot of money." But everybody's saying, "Well, Drew Brees needs to be paid." Well, why? wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got you got Johnson, who's the highest paid player in the game, and he's a wide receiver. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, but, but Drew Brees, think- how many good quarterbacks are there in the NFL? How many good receivers are there? There's a ton of receivers because the rules favor these guys. How many oh, great? They don't, they, don't, they don't favor the quarterback. Well, they do, but how many great quarterbacks do we have? You got I, you I got ten. You, you, how many great I, quarterbacks? There were ten. There were ten. Four thousand. That doesn't yards matter. Passes. How many great quarterbacks? Great. They're probably six. Okay, let's elite. run. Okay, when I say I say elite, elite. I'm talking about the the top, of the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme. Okay. Why are we yelling? I I didn't mean to yell. You're, yeah, all I'm all I'm saying is is that receiver the, 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 there's a there's a a misunderstanding that only receivers are selfish 
and I and I did and I refuse to believe that. Having played the game, having been around some of the great, all great players are selfish. I agree you with you. Think, you don't you don't think Drew Brees wants to throw the ball forty five times a game? But he has to throw it to a lot of different receivers, whereas a receiver thinks, I'm the only guy out here, I'm open. Why aren't I getting my throws, my catches? That's the no, selfish... The, the, the great player thinks, he, he, in my mind, now I took a different approach. You don't think I wanted John to throw the football to me? Of course I did. But I, was, I, had, I channeled my energy in a different way. Yeah, but you were smart. But wait, wait, you, you were smart. You had a bigger brother who who let you know what how to be a Hall of Fame player, how to carry yourself, how to act, how to be all around. And I wanted I wanted the football, but I tell you what, I knew in the fourth quarter when we needed the first down <laughs> or we needed to play, I know where number seven was going with the football. He's uh, Shannon Sharp, Broncos Hall of Fame tight end, and Fields Hines Ward will eventually get into the Hall of Fame. Joining us, the Dan Patrick and Show. He's a Georgia boy. I hope so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How did how did John Elway do this? Dan, I always use the adage: Why do movie stars marry other movie stars? Because they know <laughs> they know what it's like to live in that fishbowl. They know what it's like to be stared at like a cage animal. John Elway won Super Bowls at the age of thirty-seven and at the age of thirty-eight. Peyton Manning wants to do that. Um, Peyton Manning knows what it's like to be a great football player, what it's like to be a, 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 a face of an organization. The only thing that John doesn't know that Peyton knows, he doesn't know what it's like to play for a different team. Peyton gets an opportunity to go to a guy in John Fox, and all the coaches that he played for, for the most part, have been defensive-minded coaches. That was a plus for the Broncos. Um, John Elway, having gone, having won Super Bowls later in his career, being the guy that said all he couldn't win, then he won, being a quarterback, Hall of Fame, that worked in our favor. Pat Bowling. Pat Bowling doesn't have a Twitter account. Pat Bowling <laughs> doesn't do any talk. He, they, Pat Bowling, Pat, it, 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 unless you really, really follow football, you probably don't even know who Mr. B is. He likes it that way. John, you and John Fox run this organization. Get me to what I want to have, and that's another Super Bowl in the, in the lobby. Who wins? I think all those factors. Who, factored in. who wins the Super Bowl sooner? Eli or Peyton? It's, it, it's, it's hard to win, to jump right in, and no matter how great you are as a player. Um, because Eli's situation, Eli and them are, I think Eli and them are better equipped. Now, they have a tougher road to go because I think, you know, the NFC is a little tougher right now than the, a, than the AFC. Denver's got I a think, tough I, schedule. I think the and, and I think, and I think that's what you you, look, you factor their schedule in. You factor in what Mr. B told John he needed. I don't want to be good next year. I want to be great. Yeah, I think the expectations are right there. That same expectations for Eli are there for Peyton. We're talking to uh, Shannon Sharp, the uh, Hall of Fame tight end, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. They still have some cap room. They still can surround him with maybe another wide receiver or tight end. They still can go out and get a, a good, a solid defensive lineman. We still, they still have the draft upcoming, so they still have some money to play with to make. This is not the team that we see today on March 21st. Yep. Is not the team that they're going to trot out there opening, opening night, opening day. Yeah, I'd like to get rid of that uh, late first round pick and see if you can get Mike Wallace. Give that pick up to the Steelers, and uh, if you can get Mike Wallace, um, okay, now, now you now got not, my attention. I'm, you know what, John, uh, uh, Dan? I'm not so sure that the Steelers wouldn't match. I don't know if they can afford to lose this guy. They don't usually match, though. I think they'd let him go. That's just my feel. So. If, if, if the Broncos were to tender him an offer, I would hope they would let him go. <laughs> yeah. Because now you so because now you take if, if they're going to play on a two wide receiver set, you take Mike Wallace and put him at the X. You put Demarius Thomas at the Z. Now if you're going to play in the three wide receiver set, you do the same thing, and now you put uh, 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 Decker. Decker in the slot, yeah. and so that, that's what Peyton's really comfortable with. Uh, uh, Willis Willis loves running in the single back set. Uh, they could they could they could do some things, and, right. uh, but defensively, I, I still think we need to get we need to get us. Uh, we, I don't know if Brian Dawkins is going to return. We need a tack, we need a D tackle, and we need a safety. And plus, you're going to have to address issues because you got two guys that's face, facing long term suspension. So you're going to have to address that issue also. So. All right, Doug. I, I pitched my wagon to number seven. 
All right, Deb. So whatever he think, whatever he deems is in the best interest of this ball club, let's ride with it. Before I let you go, now be honest. Would you want to be a receiver playing in Tim Tebow's offense? No. Mm-mm. No, I wouldn't. Because at the end, of, because at the end of the day, you know, and people say, "Well, it's all about winning." Yeah, but I want to contribute to the winning. And I don't really think I don't see how catching one pass a game really helps my team win. Okay. That's a hard. I, I I played in a system similar to Tim Tebow. <laughs> it was with the Baltimore Ravens. That's a hard, that's a hard way to play football, Dan, because you put so much. Because basically, you playing for one. You playing for one big play. You're playing that you have the right call on when the defense is in the wrong coverage. And it puts so much. Not only does it put pressure on you, it puts pressure on your defense because they know if they give up 14 points early, the game is probably over. Well, why would these other teams want Tim Tebow then? Why does Jacksonville or the Jets or Miami? Why? Well, why? We know, well, we know what we know what Jacksonville would want him. Just to bring people in, right? Um, and, and, and and well, I'm, I've, I've seen Miami say, you know, they don't want to change their offense; they want to run the West Coast system. And I, I, he is not conducive for the West Coast system because there's not a lot of deep drops. Everything in the West Coast is three and five steps, which is scat protection, which means you're getting people out. You need to throw on rhythm. One, not there. Go to two. Two's not there. Take the check down. So it's not a whole lot of deep seven-step drops. Wait, 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 wait. That's not how the West Coast system functions. Um, but, you know, maybe if you put them in the wildcat situation, if you're willing to revamp your offense, and build it around what he does well, I think he can have some success. Do I think you can win a championship like that? No, I do not. But he can have success if you scrap if you do what the Broncos did. Basically you go back you're going back to a college style offense, you're going back to seventies, Nebraska, Oklahoma, where it's a lot of running, <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna throw the football and catch when we catch you off guard, you can have some success. But do I think you can win a championship like that? Because as you mentioned the way the rules are constructed now for the receivers, uh, for the offense, you need to be able to throw the ball, and you need to throw the ball at a high completion and a high accuracy rating. Hope I get a chance to uh, yell at you once again here soon. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe. Is that how you treat all your guests? You, you bring them on and then you yell at them? Well, you know what? I learned from your brother. <laughs> your brother. Ask your brother the time that he embarrassed me in front of Hank Aaron. What did he say? I jump on him. Tell me what he said. I jump on him next time I see him. Okay. We're uh, in a charity golf event, and I'm getting ready. I'm with Howie Long. I'm getting ready to get a uh, my airline ticket, and Hank Aaron is there. And your brother, as he's been known to use the expression, yells out as loud as he can, DP, you my – and Hank Aaron is standing right next to me. And I'm going, <laughs> oh, Shut up, Sterling. And, you know, Hank Aaron, with all the, the the poor man went through in his life, and all of a sudden here's your brother yelling that out. And I'm standing there, and I go, uh, what should I have done there when your brother said that? You probably, tur- you probably turned as dark as what he called <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a walk-off. Uh, good to visit with you again, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Shannon Sharp, Hall of Famer, delivering.